within the power of prayer in your relationship with God up in the heavens, how you can basically persuade God and make him change his mind is a very powerful factor here. And this is what Moses did. And this is one of the foundations that I actually taught you a little bit before. But now I'm going to expand this. Okay, so let's look at two things here. We're going to look at two things that's a mighty combo that Moses used to convince God. Now, we're going to look at Deuteronomy chapter 3. Now remember, Moses, he cannot enter the promised land. Is that correct? Because he made God angry, right? But Moses, he decided to pray so that he can change God's mind. Now notice that Moses sinned like all of you. But despite of Moses' sin, he realized that his prayer life can change God's mind. So you got to realize, don't let your sin discourage you. You'd be surprised if you pray to the Lord how much he could answer. Let me show you how powerful this is. Verse 23, uh, I besought the Lord at that time, saying, O Lord God, thou hast begun to show thy servant thy greatness and thy mighty hand, for what God is there in heaven or on earth that can do according to thy works and according to thy might. I pray thee, let me go over and see the good land that is beyond Jordan. And how did God respond? He said no, actually, at verse 26. He was mad. But the Lord was wroth with me for your sakes and would not hear me. And the Lord said unto me, Let it suffice thee, speak no more unto me of this matter. But, look at this. This is how powerful it is. How powerful it is, is that even when God said no, look how God relented to the prayer in some way. Keep reading. Verse 27, Get thee up into the top of Pisgah, and lift up thine eyes westward, and northward, and southward, and eastward, and behold it with thine eyes, for thou shalt not go over this Jordan. God didn't have to do that with Moses. Moses got to see the promised land even though he didn't go in. God's like, okay, I'll at least let you see it. And let me show you even a more powerful one. When Jesus Christ was there on the Mount of Transfiguration, Moses was in the promised land that time. Wow. Good. Even when God said no, but God relented. Why? There's something, there's a key importance here that you want to know. And let's all close with a word of prayer and end Bible study, right? <laughs> no. Look at verse 24. O Lord God, thou hast begun to show thy servant thy greatness, thy mighty hand. For what God is there in heaven or on earth that can do according to thy works? So God's like, yeah, I know I'm that great, Moses. I know. But don't, don't try to butter me up. I'm still angry at you. <laughs> you know what it is with Moses? This is very important. And Spurgeon mentioned this within the power of prayer. God, he is God 100% because of one of the most important basic doctrines that I talk, taught you at Beginner's Discipleship. The balance and attributes of God. Now, think. let me give you an example. Lord, you're so merciful that your word said that uh, your mercy is made new every morning and you forgive my iniquity. For your mercy's sake, please forgive me. Give me another chance. What do you think the Lord's going to do then? Because of his attribute. You claim his grace. Lord, the Bible says that you are a gracious God, abundant, and to forgive. So, because of that, uh, where your word says your grace, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Give me another chance. Talk about his attribute. Lord, you're a great God, a powerful God. And so you can let me see the good land. Anything's possible with you, Lord. Claim his attribute. That's important. Because God knows his attribute and he cannot go against his own attribute. So when you claim his attribute, the reason why the Lord could give in at times is because he appreciates how much you know him. How much you know him. His person. Let me give you another one. You'll notice over here that he was desperate as well, right? Verse 23, I besought the Lord. He was desperate. But let's look at Psalms chapter 130 now. 
This is your key. Moses, he didn't go inside the promised land. He had to wait for a millennia, if not longer, or maybe shorter than that, but centuries. But his prayer was answered eventually because there's a key word called patience. Now look at Psalms chapter 130. Look how desperate the psalmist was. Like he wanted this prayer to be answered. All right, he was very desperate. Psalms chapter 130, verse 1. Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? So look at this. The psalmist is saying, out of the depths, I'm crying to you. Please hear my prayer. He's desperate. Verse 4, but there is forgiveness with thee that thou mayest be feared. See, he's claiming his attribute. You notice that? You notice verse 3? Yeah. He's claiming his attribute. But David realizes, he realized God's not just going to answer it like that. We all think this, Lord, you're a gracious God, so give me another chance. And then guess what? Let's say that the church kicked you out because you committed some, something really bad. That's legitimate. And you can't uh, come back to the church. And then you're like, Lord... I prayed and claimed your attribute. Why didn't you give me that chance? Because that's not how it works, child. How it works is through time of patience. Why? Because the Lord has to see your character more. He has to see your character more. So he wants to see how much you can claim his attribute and know his person while you know more about your own person too. How you have a strong communication in prayer is not just only knowing the person of God. You know your person too. Where you are. You understand more about yourself. And when time... Ha uh, hey, don't deny it. I know a lot of people who spend time praying understand this. When you pray for a long time, not only do you understand God a little more, you understand more about yourself more. About your flesh. And what things you need to change and what you experienced and what you learned along the way. That's why verse 5, what did David say? I, what? Wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait, and in his word do I hope. My soul waiteth for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say more than they that watch for the morning. Look at how the psalmist repeated it twice. They, more than they that watch for the morning. Meaning the fervency, see this? The fervency is not just prayer. The fervency also relies on your patience. Your patience should be as powerful as your prayer life. And when you pray, you don't quit. And when you don't quit, that means you're not quitting your patience either. And you keep relying on God and desperately praying to Him, claiming His attribute. Now, why is that? Why does God work that way? Because look at James chapter 5. James chapter 5. James chapter 5. And we'll read verse 7. Verse 7. Man, this sure beats all the wacky stuff you're hearing nowadays, right? Of all the evil going on. Why are people so infatuated with evil when they should be more infatuated with God? And prayer is the key to that. I'm glad one onliner said this. I'm glad that one onliner said, you know, it's sad that all the stuff when you talk about end time prophecy or conspiracy, views go up, but in your prayer videos, it's small. I'm glad the onliner said that, and I hope that more of you will say that too in this video if it's uploaded. James chapter 5, verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. See, be patient. Why? Because the patience is this. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it until he received the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. And this patience at verse 10 and 11, right, the patience, is tied also, noteth later on, what's he going to mention later on? Verse 15, prayer. Verse 17, prayer. Verse 18, because he prayed, the fruit came out. That matches with uh, James 5, 7 about the fruit coming out through patience. See, the reason, uh, if you want a powerful prayer life, patience, a lot of people, this is your problem. You think this is your disadvantage. If you say, Lord, I want to skip this and I want you to answer it immediately, you're missing one of the key ingredients to a powerful prayer life, which is fruit. 
because if you have fruit that just grows like on the spot, would you, uh, would it taste as good or would it taste, uh, or would the fruit taste even better when it takes special time and care and uh, proper nourishment and water, sunlight, and then when you chew on that fruit, man, it tastes good. But when it's done immediately, like all these cheap products, you know, trying to make things quickly, 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 it doesn't taste that good. More expensive pricey items are those that they take, took more time with. That's good. Not something that's cheap. Do you have a cheap prayer life? Do you have a cheap prayer life, a quick instant, instant gratification prayer life? Then you miss out the fruit. That'll preach. Now, let me show you Daniel chapter... Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10. Now, notice that Daniel, that when he was praying to the Lord, that a lot of people, they might think that I might faint, I may not have enough strength I'm about to give up. Well, look at Daniel's life. So this is what you need to do. Some of you might say, this is too tough for me. How can I keep holding out in prayer and patience? You got to realize this. If God wants to hear your prayer with patience, okay, is that what God wants? He wants to hear your patience, yet. Yeah? He wants to, he likes it when you talk about his attributes, yes? He loves to hear your prayer, right? Then what in the world? Why wouldn't God give you the strength to do this? Why wouldn't God give you the strength to do this? He surely will. So that's why it's important that you just claim his grace and his strength. You pray for it. All right, look at Daniel chapter 10. And then we'll read verse 2. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. Now look how desperate he was. One of the key things concerning prayer, another thing is desperation. Now I'm not saying that you should become paranoid every time and then pant your breath every time and say, I'm desperate, Lord, please answer. It's not something that you deliberately make it happen. The reason why desperation works, though, is because desperation means your total full reliance on God because nothing out there is something you can rely on that will save you. For example, if you're stuck in the middle of a chimney in the factory and no matter what you do, you can't get out, then do, are you going to rely on anything or are you going to rely on only one thing, which is prayer? See, when you're stuck in the middle of a chimney of a factory and you try everything in the world and you literally try everything, there's nothing, nothing. There's zero reliance on anything except one thing. Now your mind changes to one thing. God, please help me. And that's the only thing you're relying on. That's why desperation quite often works because it shows who you're relying on. See, and that's the one thing. Prayer becomes powerful when you're reliant on Him. Remember the Psalms? He was relying on the Lord. I need you. I need you. It's like he's very desperate. But then what can keep him going? Uh, look at verse 8. Therefore I was left alone and saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in me, for my comeliness was turned in me into corruption, and I retained no strength. And that's how you feel like when you're praying for a long time, right? But look at this. Yet heard I the voice of his word. And when I heard the voice of his words, then was I in a deep sleep on my face and my face toward the ground. And behold, a hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hand. Notice verse 10, God gives Daniel strength. You see that? Verse 9, God gives him sleep. Why? When he hears God's voice. Where do you hear his voice? Through his word. Not some charismatic, you know, audible voice hearing thing. It's through his word. But a lot of times, what did the Bible say? Uh, he'll even speak to you, what, through his creation itself. Through his creation itself, you see his hand working. And not only that, even in every step you take, the Holy Spirit is guiding and leading you in all truth. I wonder how much he's, you see him speaking to you. That's the idea that I'm driving at. Not something audible, but him working in your life. So then, open your eyes when distress happens. A lot of people don't open their eyes. They're blinded. Open your eyes to his word and to how he moves in your life. 
see how God's moving in your life. And then you'd be surprised that at that time when you see his hand moving or hear him speaking to you that you can keep going, then you get the strength to continue patient in prayer. That's what happens. But let's go, uh, let me show you two interesting things. We're going to go to Genesis 30. Genesis chapter 30. Genesis chapter 30. Now, uh, what made Rachel's prayers answered? Because she finally prayed. Look at Genesis chapter 30, verse 22. And God remembered Rachel, and God hearkened to her, and opened her womb, and she conceived and bare a son, and said, God hath taken away my reproach. Why? I'll tell you why. Because she tried, if you read the rest of the chapter, she tried everything to compete against Leah. And uh, there's one thing you don't want to see is a woman in jealous anger mode, and that nothing scarier than that. But uh, nothing, because it'll drive her, something will keep driving her to do that. So you notice this strong drive within her? At a point when she tried everything and nothing worked, one thing was left and that was prayer. You think that drive died within her? No, she was still jealous at her sister. She, was, she had a strong drive, which is why she became more desperate and God answered her prayer. Now, here's the thing. A lot of times what makes us desperate, unfortunately, is when God puts us at a point where we're like, uh, in, a lot of times in anger or we're jealous of something. Did you realize that? That's a driving force that makes us desperate. Sometimes that happens to people. And then you'll see God answering your prayer. But that shouldn't be the case, right? But sometimes it would work. For example, Paul said, I had godly jealousy. Do you remember me teaching that to you last time? Sometimes jealousy is an important thing in prayer where you can, it can increase the drive and the desperation to pray harder. And as a matter of fact, it would drive your patience even longer. Trust me, if there's like a, a grudge that does not die out, that's scary. <laughs> A jealousy that doesn't die out, that can go on forever. It can be very patient. Let's close it with Genesis 32. This is our last passage. Genesis chapter 32. We're going to read verse 25. Verse 25. So we see over here, one, it's by relying on God's strength that keeps us going, right? Two, it could also be jealousy. Now, I know I mentioned jealousy as a bad thing, but it doesn't have to necessarily be all the time bad. As I mentioned before, Paul mentioned godly jealousy. So there is a form of godly jealousy that can keep you going. So that will, uh, if you're having trouble with patiently praying, just remember these three pointers. One, it's by God giving you strength. So listen to his voice, seek him. Second is jealousy. A third thing is actually when you're in fear. When you're afraid of your life and you realize God is the only answer to save you from that mess and to rescue you from a problem. I've seen people will pray all night. Even people who are backsliders who don't come to church. I, uh, I've known of people who will pray all night long. Why? Because of fear. Something bad happened, they want to be rescued from a mess. All right, Genesis chapter 32, like Jacob here. Jacob was afraid of Esau, right? So then what did he do? At verse 26, God said what? Let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And then what happened? God finally blessed him. So notice over here that Jacob, Jacob was a wicked sinner. All right? He's a wicked sinner, but he did not quit praying and patiently pray. A lot of you throw in the towel and quit prayer because you think you're too wicked. But you see right over here, Jacob didn't care. He's like, God, I know I messed up. I'm a problem maker, but I ain't going to quit praying to you. Why? Because he's afraid. Listen, if you're truly afraid of your wickedness and sin of letting God down, if you're truly afraid then you wouldn't quit praying. You would keep praying. 
So it shows sometimes that when you quit praying due to guilt over your sin, it may be you're not really scared of your sin after all. It may be a sign that you've learned to accept your sin. It's a sign of defeat that this is just going to be me for the rest of my life and you lost your fear of sin. If you're really afraid of sin, I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're not going to quit. No matter how wicked you are like Jacob, you're going to keep patiently praying and then God will answer prayer mightily. Look at Moses. He sinned and he changed. He made God relent somewhat somewhere. Why? Because here's the thing. Claim his attribute. That's very powerful. And when you claim his attribute, you need to patiently pray. But what can keep me going, uh, going pastor? You need to seek God's strength. There's a jealous drive or there's a fear. And I'm talking about a healthy fear, not a paranoid fear. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But when you have that, then what happens? Mighty fruits result from a pathetic life like yours and mine that you thought wouldn't amount to anything. All right, I hope tonight's teaching was a blessing and it will change your prayer life. Live your prayer life. That's my theme, right? Live your prayer life. Don't just pray. Live it. Heavenly Father, I pray that tonight's teachings have uh, helped us where we can change our lives to glorify and honor you even more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good night, everybody. Thank you for attending.